Thank you. Let's get on with the program. Tonight's episode in our series of profiles on the men and women behind the Truth Commission yeah, process is Dr. Koza Mgojo. Reverend Dr. Elliot Mbuisa Koza Mgojo was born at Umzimkulu on a farm in the Eastern Cape. He later became a school teacher in Natal, which led him to become a preacher. That's when he decided to leave education and join the world of ministry. So then when I was born at Mzimkulona farm, I grew up there, but uh, I schooled there, but my father was interested that we, we must not lose the touch with Natal. So most of my father's children, including me, did most of their schooling in Natal so that we could not lose in touch with our roots. Uh, that is why even when I became a teacher, I used to be a Zulu teacher because we were in contact with our roots. But so, you know, when I grew up, my grandmother used to call me Mfundis. So my dad, there are some few people in our village who just called me Mfundis. I don't know why, because, of course, uh, I was quite a good kid, but I didn't see the signs of Mufunis. Of course, I used to go to the church, because with us it was compulsory that if you come from the Christian background, you must go to church. Reverend Gojo met his destiny, preaching the word of God, soon after he started teaching. Just when there's a, a teacher, even before I joined the YMG, it was in a Rondavel house somewhere outside Malgas. There no, was no location. Simply Rondavel house. And then when they were calling the people, those who wanted to join the YMG, I found myself joining. I don't know how it happened. So that was the start of the excitement. And then I joined the classes for local preachers. I studied for the local preacher and I became a full local preacher. Then that's when, after that, I, I found that there was an edge for me to become a minister. So I candidated for the ministry in 1958. Wrote the exams. You write exams in the Methodist Church. I was a full local preacher by then. And I passed the exams. And because I was very much involved in the life of the young people in the Deben circuit. The superintendent minister was Reverend Skakana then, and these two circuit stewards, Mr. Mdolo and uh, Mr. Masego, they appealed to the conference that they would like me, my first appointment to be in Deben, so that I could continue with my work in the youth. So I was appointed, the conference which met in 1958 appointed me to Lamonville. That is where I started my ministry in Lamonville where I was there in 1959 and 60, before I went to Fort Hare for full training as a minister of the Methodist Church. And then I did my BA degree at Fort Hare. And then when I left Fort Hare, at the end of 1963, I was posted by the conference to go and start a new station somewhere in a very rural area called a Kribin in the district of Libote at a place called Mahuben I was a young person married with a young child we went there the following year Reverend Gojo got ordained as a minister and helped at the Tlagberry's institution as a pseudo chaplain in 1964, he left for Chicago to further his studies, and when he came back in 1966, he served the Methodist Church in different areas. I had two scholarships. I had a scholarship from Harvard and from Oxford, but I couldn't go to Oxford because it was only providing for me, not for my family. And Harvard was providing for me and my family, and having experience that life when I went to Chicago and I left my family behind, I said, no, I'll never go overseas without my family. So I took up the scholarship of Harvard. I was there from 
September 1970, and I came back at the end of 75. Well, I've got just two children. Of course, I lost two babies in the Transkai when I was the minister. You know, we, we used to minister in very rural areas where we didn't have doctors, where a child would just be caught by a flu. And then it was very hard to get the doctors around. So I don't want to remind myself about that experience. But I've got two children. I've got my son, uh, Mkolisi. He started as a computer analyst. And uh, my daughter, the one you saw here, after completing her BA and LLB in Natal University in Peter Marisburg, she's on her last year doing articles now. She's finishing this year doing, doing articles. And at the same time, she's also taking some courses here in Deben in convents because she wants to specialize uh, as a lawyer. And of course, I've got my wife, Stella, you saw her. Uh, when I got married to her, she was a, in charge of the theater at King Edward, a nursing sister. During those days, there were no black matrons. They were called senior sisters. She was a senior sister there. And then when we got married, she had to go with me. When Reverend Gojo was called to join um, the Truth Commission, he was initially reluctant because of his commitments with the Methodist Church, until a few influential friends convinced him that working on the Truth Commission would be a worthwhile national commitment. I made the arrangement that though I'm in the Truth Commission with my side, I must be in the pulpit on Sunday, every Sunday. And it gives me strength. You see, that is my basis of the strength. I wear the TRC things, I get tired, but I know that there's a spring from which I'm going to throw when it comes Sunday, when I meet the church people with their prayers and song and worship. You see, these are revelations. You tell the TRC that it was TRC for these stories to be revealed. Uh, that is why, though we don't like amnesty, most of us, we become sympathetic with it because we say that if there was no amnesty, we would not have heard these stories. We would not have the exhumations okay. of the tombs. I remember one mother from Port Shepstone who had her son exhumed. She says that, you know, when they came back from exile, I was waiting that my son is coming back. And all this time I've been waiting. When I saw the bus, people getting down at the bus stop, I used to look and say, that, oh, my son will be coming. When I heard the knock at the door, I said that maybe that is my son. And she said, now I know that my son is normal, is killed. That I can get the bone and go and bury it, give it a, a decent burial. It does satisfy me because I can never bring him back again.